Hello YouTubers! I'm making another video. Uh, I wasn't really sure what to do for the next video. I So I just decided I'm going to show some of the projects that I'm making and maybe give you some thoughts about uh, what I consider when I'm spinning fibers. And maybe that will provide you with some useful ideas for yourself when you're trying to figure out um, you know, how you want to spin something or what kind of yarn you want to make. But today I thought I would just show uh, a little bit about what, I th what I'm considering when I spin merino wool. Uh, I love merino. It comes in so many fantastic colors and there's lots of hand dyed merino that's also awesome. So I have, uh, I just was going to start another project today where I'm going to make some pink yarn because I am on the quest for all the pink yarn. And I just was going to show you, you know, how I make my project and think about things. Um, I also wanted to share this book. It's a great book. Uh, it's by, it's the Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs by Sarah Anderson. And it talks about spinning all different kinds of yarns. It talks about two ply, about three ply, why two ply would be better for a project than three ply. Uh, it talks about chain plying, all of the good things. And then in the back, it has little cards about how to do each different kind of yarn. I have to say, I have only really done two and three ply yarns. For me, the colors of the yarn and the project that I might make with it later are really my interests. I don't really want to spend a bunch of time making fancy yarn and then have it be part of a bigger project and I just don't get to enjoy the efforts of that yarn. I'm not to say in the future I might do it, but I'm just not really doing it right now. So, I, th I mean, this book also, you know, shows how to join the yarn. It shows how to spin off the fold, all kinds of different um, basics that you would find helpful if you were, you know, just getting started with spinning. I think this must be where I got my ideas for how I join my yarn. It sort of talks about um, how to do it in here and it's sort of similar to how I do it. But anyway, so I don't want to ramble on too long. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of get to how I think about starting a project. I want to make some pink yarn. I have plenty of pink fiber that's merino. I do mix fibers. Sometimes I will stick merino in with Cordell. I'll stick it in with Polworth. You know, I just, I just don't care. I do what I think is fun and uh, we'll make a yarn that I'm happy with. I also don't really want my yarns to be similar to yarns you might buy at a store. Uh, I want them to be consistent, but the color is really the fun thing. And uh, it's nice when it's soft because I tend to wear soft wools better than the scratchy stuff, unfortunately. So I'm sort of trying to spin up all my scratchy fiber so I can find projects for that and just have the soft stuff, which I might make sweaters with, or I'm kind of into weaving blankets right now. So we'll see how that goes. But what I do to get started is I gather up a bunch of fiber that I might use in a project. And I don't generally like to just buy a, a bat and only use that bat. In the beginning, of course, I did a lot of that. So, you know, when you're first starting out, I definitely can recommend that's what you should do. Just start, divide your bat in half. One half is for one bobbin, one half is for the other bobbin. Ply them together and you've got some yarn. I did a lot of that. But what I do now is, like, this is a hand spun bat I got off of Etsy. Um, I'll put a link below. It's Banshee Fiber Arts, who I do like her yarn or her fiber quite a bit. Um, and so I took this and I split it. So I had two lengths that were the same. And then I wanted to add some other colors that were merino that I got from Paradise Fibers. And I just weighed the two piles so that they had the same weight. And so I can, you know, have one for one bobbin and one for the other bobbin. And what I do is I have one pile that has longer lengths of color and the other pile will have shorter lengths of color. Um, I'll show that to you right here. Just a second. So when I divide up my fiber to first start spinning, I will make one that has long runs of color and one bobbin that has shorter runs of color. So in the longer runs of color, I would take 
you know, the, the part of the, the batch and I would break it up in bigger chunks. Like I would, you know, have one slice of pink that was this big, one slice that was this big. I would stop where the color was and I would pull it apart here and have that as one color. And then I have one side that has shorter runs of colors. And that's because I like, this is some yarn I spun quite some time ago. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> so that's barber pulling, right? Where the, the one fiber, one bobbin's one color, the other bobbin's the other color. And so they're twisting together and they're providing a, you know, two-tone yarn. And that's what I like. And so I'm trying to maximize the barber pulling by having one bobbin with long runs of color and the other bobbin with these shorter runs of color. And I do that with any of the fibers. It's not something I just do with merino. I like to do that with whatever I'm spinning. Here's the merino fiber that I was showing you before that I was working with. And the thing about merino is it's pretty dense. Like the fibers just kind of want to pull on each other. Um, you know, that's probably true of lots of bats, but I find it particularly true of Merino. It's pretty dense and uh, the fibers are small, so I think they just compact together and sometimes are harder to pull apart. So usually if I was finding that to be the case, I would probably pre-draft my fiber. So I would take a, a small bit and to pre-draft, right, we pull just a little bit out. Move our hand down a little bit, pull, pull. And so I sort of loosened up the fibers. But you can see sort of when I pre-drafted it, I don't know if it's clear, there's kind of lumps. Like there's a bit here that has a little bit more, a bit here that has a little bit more. And so I was finding that that was difficult to get a consistent single width. And so I decided that maybe with this Merino, I wasn't going to pre-draft it because when you pre-draft it, the fiber will come out more quickly. And since I've sort of broken it apart where some places are now more dense than the others, it was sort of pulling out unevenly. But you know, if you like to pre-draft and you know, it just gives you like more control over the fiber cause it's kind of less clumped together. That's a fine thing to do. I'm going to show you how I would spin this anyhow, but you know, when I spin my merino fiber, I generally want to be making a thin single because I'll be making a thin yarn. You know, you can make them thicker, but because it's so dense, sometimes the singles will have a lot of weight to them, which will make the yarn heavy and it's not the most comfortable to wear. I actually made a sweater of merino that I spun and it was early days and that's basically what happened. It was very uh, dense and heavy and uh, I just didn't like it that much. I'm also just trying like, I definitely like to spin the bulkier fibers, but they are heavy. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna start using some of those in the blankets and see if I can spin some finer fibers and make finer yarn that I might be able to use in garments. But you know, who knows? Who knows what I'll do with it? But that's my thought for today. But anyway, so I'm going to uh, get at the wheel and show you my thoughts on how I would spin this fiber. Okay, one more thing before we go to the wheel. I get a lot of my fiber off of Etsy. I'll put a few people that I purchased them from down below. Uh, like I said, I like Banshee Fiber Arts, but there's a couple others over there that I like. But Fa Paradise Fiber is also a great place to get fiber from in the beginning. They're quite reasonably priced. I just looked up the cost. You can get eight ounces for about $18, which is pretty good because eight ounces is a good chunk to be spinning from. When I make a sweater, I generally like to start with at least 12 ounces, 16 is probably best, and go from there. And then sometimes I might even throw in purchased yarn just to help fill in some of the gaps. But one of the things I did early days when I started spinning was I contacted Paradise Fibers and had them make me these bags. And these are the most awesome thing because it says on the front what the fiber is, and then there's a little sample. So you can tell from this bag, it has many, they have a gazillion colors, but so 
if I wanted to do a pink project, I could look at these three fibers and then I would know what they were and I could order them accordingly to whatever I thought my project was. The combed top from Paradise Fibers is also pretty dense. It spins a little bit differently, I think, than um, dyed top that I might get from somewhere else, but it spins beautifully. And it's also just fun to have all the colors and make something, you know, wild with it, which is really, I like my yarn to be very colorful. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. I made the, I asked them to do this for me. I don't think that they offer it. I don't know if they would still do it, but it was very nice of them to do it. And, you know, I paid for it, but it's nice to have them as a reference for sure when you're trying to pick out colors to do projects. Okay, now to the wheel. Okay, here I am at my Shat Matchless again. Uh, I put on the medium whirl because that is what the wheel comes with. And I think probably that's true that most wheels come with a medium size whirl. Once again, I use my little clips and I've tied a little uh, string around this knob here. And so I can store my clips there because no matter what, they always wander off. And so uh, once again, I feel like the tension I'm using is quite low. I probably have turned it, well, let's just see. If I take all the tension off, it's there. So I've turned it probably not quite a quarter of a turn. And also I should say, when I was sort of messing around with getting the tension set up on this, the screw on this knob had come loose and so it was just spinning. And I couldn't really tell that it wasn't moving the spring. I was just fiddling with it and wasn't really doing anything. And so then I'm like, you know, I inspect what's happening with the spring and why is it not um, responding and I saw that the screw was loose. So, you know, it's not always you. <laughs> Sometimes it is the wheel. And so, you know, that's just something to check if you're having troubles and you're not getting it to do what you want. But so I have it about a quarter of a turn, if that, and my medium whirl. And it's, so for me, this is gonna be a pretty slow treadle. And so when I'm pulling up the fiber, it's probably going to be a pretty slow pull. And this is not um, pre-drafted. This is just coming straight out of the, it's very stuck to, each, stuck to itself. So I'm just pulling out the, I'm sort of pinching at the top and pulling whatever amount I think I want for the single. And since I'm trying to make them thin, I'm just pulling out a little bit. So if I was going faster, I could pull it out more quickly or I could pull out a longer bit and hold it out to get the single that I wanted. So this is a pretty slow treadle for me. I would probably go up a whirl, but I just wanted to show you on the medium uh, that it is, it does work. And also I wanted to show you that a lot of times when you see people spinning, they're just spinning super fast or they're using a fast whirl and it's, you know, going quickly, which, is great, you know, if that's the style of spinning you want. I don't generally like to go super fast, but in this case, to make this fiber work for this whirl, I'm going slowly. It's definitely a slow pace for pulling out the fiber. So this, if you if you only have like a medium whirl, it might be worth the pre-drafting because it will come out more quickly and so it will get into the bobbin faster which, you know, might get the project done more at a pace you, that you're happy with. I would probably, I definitely, I spun all this other stuff on the fast whirl. I will go back to the fast whirl when it's time to continue. So that, that is, it pulls out pretty nicely just from the fiber and it's not pre-drafted. So here I'm going to take a bit, I'm going to pre-draft it. So I'm just pulling it out. At intervals trying to space it out evenly you can fuss with it really gotta have it so you have to have enough space between so that the fiber will pull right if it's too close it's not gonna happen you can sort of fuss with it as much as you want in terms of you know making it smaller so the smaller you make it the quicker it's gonna pull out and so the quicker it's gonna go onto the bobbin and then I'll show you that so the difference with that 
here. So my hand's moving more quickly because I'm pulling, the smaller bits are coming out at a steadier rate. And I'm also moving down the fiber more quickly because there's less fiber at each, you know, as I go down, the amount of fiber from here to there is less than where I didn't draft it from here to there, where I didn't pre-draft it. So this probably would work better if I was just going to use this medium whorl because the fiber is coming out at a pace that seems a little better for my treadling. And you can also see I'm doing a little bit of backwards. I'm pulling it out and pulling back sort of at the same time. You, it could be that you just want to do the short forward draft. And I'm definitely, when I'm pulling it from the stuff that hasn't been pre-drafted, I definitely don't have to worry about where my thumb is quite so much to uh, adjust the amount that's pulling out. Because it's sort of all the same density, it seems to be pulling out pretty evenly across the fiber bump. But since because I pre-drafted it, it's going to pull out more quickly. But even this I could do slowly. So you just have to match your treadling speed to the amount of fiber you're pulling out, along with the speed of the whirl, right? It's those three things that you want to be sort of in the sweet spot so that you can, um, you know, have the fiber come out consistently for you. I'm going to get a bigger bump. Okay, so here's one that's not pre-drafted. And you can see my hand barely holding it. Really the friction of the fiber pulling out of the bump is enough for me to sort of get the same amount every time. Because it's sort of all the same density in the bump. So I do kind of like this better. And I have a pretty good amount of twist on here. I, I might have a little more. If I had a, a faster whirl, I would probably have just a bit more twist. But the other thing is, look, I stopped and the twist is just at the tip of my fiber. So that is definitely also part of your success. If you have the twist way out here and you pull, I mean, this will come apart. And then if you get, so that's one thing to watch for. You want to keep your fingers close by, close to the start of the fiber, so that you're sort of, your fingers are the barrier between the twist and the fiber. And say it gets down, I mean, I have to hold on for quite a while, but I'm getting fiber down into here, into the, uh, bump. And so, and I have a lot of twist up here. So what I would do is unpinch it just a smidge so it pulls out because if I did this, it's not doing anything. I mean, it is coming out a little bit, but if I untwist it, it pulls very easily and I will just pull the fiber back until I feel this and it has a reasonable amount of twist. And then I can add a little bit more twist and I get it onto the bobbin. So the other thing to think about scotch tension is it's something that constantly needs to be watched. So when you first start out and the bobbin's empty, just by the nature of the spinning wheel, the take up is stronger. And so you might, you might even need less tension. I mean, I was telling you what my tension was, but given my bobbin's, you know, half full, I'm not sure, you know, how appropriate that is. You might only need just a smidge of tension when the bobbin's empty because the take up's stronger. And then as you continue to spin, you need to add more tension so that the take up remains just the same. If you just do nothing, the take up will just get to be less and less. So.
this really isn't getting quite as much spin on it as I would like, but it's working just fine. Like if I wanted more spin, I could try and treadle faster, but it's a little tricky for me. But anyway, uh, that's me spinning Merino on the spinning wheel. Okay, so that was me spinning some Merino fiber. I think I'll do a little bit more on the end with me with the fast whirl, just so you can watch. I don't know if it's helpful to see me doing it. When I was first starting, that's all I wanted to do is watch people do it. And I just want to encourage people to go slowly. I also feel like every demonstration I saw, people were just whipping. And, uh, you know, I think in the beginning, it's good to go slow. I also think this idea that spinning can only happen quickly is uh, not true. You can do it at any speed. You just have to figure out what you're comfortable with. I can go really fast now. And to be honest, I don't really like it. You know, it's just, it's less, less relaxing. So you just have to decide what kind of spinning is going to work best for you. But one more thing I thought I'd share before I left was uh, I have some yarn that I've made this week. This is the yarn that ended up coming from the spinning demo that I did when I showed how to spin on a spinning wheel. So it's kind of scratchy, but you know, it's a nice, I'd probably say, I guess it's probably bulky. And like I said, you know, you never know what kind of yarn you're going to need for a certain project. And I'm trying to get really, for me, I'm trying to practice using lots of different weights of yarn in a project together, because that seems like the most practical because I end up with lots of different weights of yarn, no matter how hard I try to get them consistent. So uh, this is another one that is a little bit of a scratchy fiber. I think it is probably, I don't really know what it is. It might've been like American wool. I don't know but it's a little scratchy. But you can see um, my goal of lots of barber pulling, I succeeded, I feel like. There's lots of different colors matching up together, which I do like. It's also a little bit of a thicker fiber. I have one spinning wheel that I own that is basically makes thicker yarns very easily. And so I do like to spin on that also. Maybe I'll show that one day. Here's one that I made that's it's a finer yarn. I was trying to get some of the blues and greens out of my stash because I thought I might use them all together. But um, once again, a little scratchy. But it's, I think it's, it's a consistent yarn, so I like that. That's part of why, I'm, you know, the blankets are appealing is I thought, well, you know, if it's scratchy, it's less of a problem when you're wearing, laying it on all your clothes, like you're laying it under it with your clothes on, so it's not touching your skin. But then this is the last one I made, and this is super wash. I did not, let's see if you can, there's some good colors. I didn't add any colors to this. I just, this is eight ounces. I got two four ounce bumps and I just spun it together and it's a little uneven, but it's fine. I think it will work great in, you know, whatever project I use. I sort of assess, you know, the durability of the yarn I've made for the project I'm doing. So clearly a coarser yarn is going to be more durable than something like this. I'm, this to me seems like it would be great for a garment, but it's not really enough fiber for a garment. So, so yeah, we'll see if I end up with some more superwash around this size and then I can mix them, match them together. But anyway, so there you go. Those are my thoughts on Merino. Hopefully something was helpful and uh, yeah, go out and spin some. It's super fun and there's so many colors. All right, have a great day.